<clears throat> Hello, my name is Maria Janowicka. I'm general pathologist in the um, Department of Pathological Anatomy Number no. 1 in National Medical Bohemolets University. Uh, the topic of my election is neoplasia, general characteristics of neoplasia. So <clears throat> neoplasia is the autonomous growth of tissues that have escaped normal restraints on cell proliferation and exhibit varying degrees of fidelity to their precursors. Neoplasia arises from mutations in genes that regulate cell growth, apoptosis, or DNA repair. Solid neoplasms are called tumors. Tumors are derived from cells that normally maintain a proliferative capacity. Thus, mature neurons and cardiac myocytes do not give um, rise to tumors. When we hear something about the tumor, the first question we are interested about if it is benign or malignant. And how can we distinguish it microscopically? So first of all, we look at the type of growth. Expensive type of growth is characteristic for benign tumors, and it means they can grow in size just pushing the borders of surrounding tissues, while malignant tumors grow infiltratively sprouting through surrounding tissues. That's why borders of malignant tumor won't be so regular as in benign one. But the final verification about nature of tumor can be done, first of all, microscopically. If you look under the microscope on the benign tumor, you will see that it resembles the tissue of a region. And uh, only ratio of stroma and parenchyma will be broken, and that is called tissue atypism. And in malignant tumors, cellular atypism will be present. It means we will see a typical mitosis, something like this, like here. We will see hyperchromatic nucleus, and uh, uh, the tissue itself won't be so similar to its original precursor. And of course, malignant tumors do metastasize. They have different routes of metastasis, including hematogenous, lymphogenous, perineural and contact route. Some types of tumors, for example sarcomas, usually metastasize hematogenically, but this is not a 100% rule. And here on the picture you can see a nerve which is surrounded by tumor. This is an uh, example of perineural root of metastasis. And here you see the pictures of metastasis in bone marrow and metastasis in liver. A number of tumors are difficult to classify because they do not fit all the criteria for either benign or malignant neoplasms. The best known example is basal cell carcinoma of the skin, which is histologically malignant because it grows infiltratively, but it does not metastasize. And the primary descriptor of any tumor, benign or malignant, is its cell of a region or tissue of a region. The classification of benign tumors is the basis for the names of their malignant variants. Uh, the suffix OMA for benign tumors is preceded by reference to the cell or tissue of a region. For example, if tumor resembles chondrocytes, we call it chondroma, or it, if it resembles a precursor of chondrocyte, we call it chondroblastoma. But everything is not so simple. For example, we have such tumors as hepatoma of the liver, melanoma, seminoma of the testes, lymphoma. They can sound rather benign, but these are highly malignant tumors. And here is presentation of general classification of neoplasms by histogenesis, which includes epithelial tumors, mesenchymal tumors, tumors from melanocytes, which are of narrow ectodermic origin, tumors from nervous system and brain membranes, tumors of hematopoietic system, and teratomas. 
Tumors of epithelial origin are given a variety of names based on what is believed to be their outstanding characteristics. Thus, a benign tumor of the squamous epithelium may be called simply epithelioma, for example, tree epithelioma, or when it is branch or exophytic, like in our picture, it can be called papilloma. Benign tumor arising from glandular epithelium on the picture here is called adenoma. If it is malignant tumor of epithelial origin, we call it carcinoma. Depending on the type of epithelium, it can be squamous carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, transitional cell carcinoma. For squamous carcinoma, we also use a subdivision into keratizing and non-keratizing carcinomas. Here on the picture, there is squamous keratizing carcinoma, and we call it keratizing because we see these pearls here. If these pearls were absent, then we would call it non-keratizing squamous carcinoma. And on this picture, we see adenocarcinoma of stomach. Here, you can see normal epithelium, glandular epithelium of stomach with regular glands. This is the basement membrane, and in the muscle layer, we see a typical irregular glands. And this is cancer. And uh, special entity carcinoma in situ. It means this is carcinoma that does not penetrate the basement membrane on which the epithelium is situated. Here we see an example with squamous epithelium. So this is epithelium. This is the basement membrane which is still intact and um, when this carcinoma will break through basement membrane here, we will call it invasive squamous carcinoma. And here is basic classification for mesenchymal tumors. If you use suff suffix oma for uh, benign tumors, for malignant tumors, you use sarcoma. So, and the first part of the name tells us about uh, tissue of origin. By the way, 80% of all mesenchymal tumors is lipoma. Tumors on the hematopoietic system are a special case in terminology. Leukemia is used for neoplasms from hematopoietic cells that present with involvement of the bone marrow. Lymphoma is used for lymphoid neoplasms that arise as discrete tissue masses besides bone marrow. Most frequently we can see lymphomas in lymph nodes, but extranodal lymphomas also occur, for example, mild lymphoma in stomach. Uh, but during some time, entities of lymphoma and leukemia have blurred because we can see lymphoma that progresses to leukemia and we can see leukemia that comes out like lymphoma. Names of tumors of the nervous system are formatted by the usual principles. So if the cell of origin is astrocyte, the name of tumor will be astrocytoma and so on. And here on the picture you see meningioma. Th that is benign tumor, but you see how it pressures on the brain. That's why benign tumors can be also rather dangerous. Tumors from melanocytes include nevus and melanoma. Nevus, nevus obviously is tumor-like formation, which everyone has while melanoma is one of the most malignant tumors. In most cases it appears de novo, but sometimes we can see malignant transformation of nevus to melanoma. Tumors that arise from germ cells and contain derivatives of different germ layers are labeled teratoma. These tumors occur principally in the gonades and occasionally in the mediastinum and may contain a variety of structures such as skin, neurons, glial cells, intestinal epithelium, cartilage, and so on. Here we can see cartilage, we can see fat, some elements of epithelium, 
Concerning teratomas, we do not use term in malignant or benign. More correct way to say uh, if it is mature or immature. If it consists only of mature elements, it is named mature. And if it has some immature elements, it immature te teratoma and uh, this variant is more dangerous. Some tumors display neoplastic elements of different cell types, but they are not germ cell tumors. For example, fibroadenoma of the breast, which you see on the picture, consists of epithelial component and of stromal component. Adenosquamous carcinoma consists of glandular and squamous carcinoma. And uh, rare malignant tumor that contains intermingled carcinomatose and sar sarcomatose elements is known as carcinosarcoma. <clears throat> and uh, some tumors in which uh, histogenesis is poorly understood or names of tumors have been just historically developed can say nothing to us about tissue of origin and malignant potential. But still many of them exist. For example, Hodgkin disease, Ewing sarcoma of bone, of bone, Brenner tumor of the ovary, and so on. Secondary descriptors, again with some inconsistencies, refer to as tumors morphological and functional characteristics. For example, the term papillary uh, means uh, that tumor has like frond-like structures. Medullary signifies a soft and cellular tumor with little connective tissue stroma, whereas kiros or desmoplastic means tumor has a lot of dense fibrous stroma. And colloid carcinomas mean secretion of abundant mucus in which float islands of tumor cells. And we know that malignant tumor can have different characteristics. Some of them are very aggressive and some tumors can grow for years and behave quite favorably. So how can we predict it? We use grading of tumors, which is surely should be described by pathologists, and we use staging of tumors, which is made by clinicians with the help of pathologists. Staging of malignant tumors is based worldwide on international T and M classification, where T means tumor, N regional metastasis in lymph nodes, and M means distance metastasis. T and M classification differs for different organs, but general principles are the same. Grading of cancer is based on how bad do the cells look. If they highly resemble the normal tissue, it means such tumors are well differentiated, and in that case they are called grade 1. With loss of differentiation, the tumor looks more and more different and more anaplastic. Tumors which are grade 4 uh, mean that they have lost all special tissue characteristics and we can't understand its histogenesis. And here is an example of breast cancer grading where we put grade 1 if more than 75% of tumor consists of tubules that have lumen and uh, they still resemble normal ducts of the breast. And again, the more the differentiated the tumor is, the highest grade is put. So, for example, if we look at grade 3 tumor, we don't see ducts with lumen. And this is an example of pathological report. Adenocarcinoma of colon invasion to the muscle layer. P uh, T2, grade 2, there is no tumor growth in lymph nodes and resection borders. And I want to add a few words about immunohistochemical method that is widely used now in tumor pathology. It is based on antibody-antigen interactions 
and it can stain different tissues with the help of different markers if the tissue will have receptors for uh, them. It can surely help us in categorization of undifferentiated malignant tumors, in determination of site of origin of metastatic tumors, and in detection of molecules that have prognostic and therapeutic significance. And here is an example of how immunohistochemistry looks like. And one clinical case. A woman, 31-year-old, was diagnosed with a tumor mass 1 cm in diameter in upper external quadrant of right breast. A biopsy was taken and pathological report was made, ductal carcinoma of the breast, grade 3. Immunohistochemistry was, was also made. Receptors for estrogen and progesterone were absent. And by the way, these receptors are used um, to establish if person can has hormonal therapy or it won't work, as in our case. And there was amplification of special protein, HER2U. Uh, this protein is associated with worse prognosis, but gives possibility of special targeted therapy. So this is how this tumor looked morphologically. And uh, in conclusion, what can we say? Clinically, this tumor was T1N0M0. Uh, which is prognostically good variant. But morphologically, this tumor was grade 3, which is prognostically bad variant. Moreover, it had amplification of hertin U protein, which is associated with worse prognosis. That's why this woman requires aggressive treatment. And at the end, I want to say that routine light microscopy is still gold standard for diagnosis of neoplasia. And the distinction between benign and malignant tumors and clear definition of tumor's histogenesis is one of the most important diagnostic challenges faced by the pathologist. Thank you for your attention.